Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we are here and this is going to be week number 4 of the UBL and we are up against Pat Mac and his Sacramento Sand Slash. Now this is going to be a really, really tough one. We played Pat Mac a couple times in the past and they have been long, grueling matches, but they've been fantastic matches, but we haven't been able to get a win yet. I have a lot of faith in what we can do, but it is going to be pretty darn tough to manage everything well. And in all honesty, like last week, this is going to be a team build where I kind of built something out pretty gimmicky, but it felt pretty fun to me and it's probably not going to be the most optimal team but i really thought that this team had a chance to do what it needed to do but that will mean that i'm going to lead very very hard on vicavolt webs now nothing here is even fast enough to take on jolly terrakion without the webs so i'm really leaning on them hard and you can see just a bandit cinderace pretty much two hits the entire team which once i started running a, a bunch of those pregame calcs it felt really obvious to me that i had to kind of lean on this strategy to kind of to hit everything with bandit adamant pyro ball and just kind of go in with that and then i kind of messed around and i built uh this really strong adamant zarud that could really manage to, to do a lot of things here as well but with zarud especially changing up moves is, is going to be important so i had the muscle band there and again not even fast enough to seek on a, a jolly terrakion but at the same time uh if i did go all in on the webs then i kind of was hoping that that wouldn't come up as, as much same thing with extra honestly it doesn't function that well outside of webs but inside of webs this thing can swords dance up it can hit the entire team really really well and just poke a ton of holes into the team as for the other mons are just meant to not lose to certain things right the wheezing is just hopefully meant to not lose to, to, to terrakion outright and um the slow king can obviously help you fit pivot around the vicable is actually really really fast because i kind i think i can kind of catch the mana buzz with a, with no speed so i have to be maxed out speed just to outspeed a no speed mana buzz but i kind of went for it this week and we're just gonna see if we can catch him off guard it might be really bad it might uh work out for me but this will unfortunately be a post com but uh, it's still a really fun one and i'm gonna get right into it okay so i end up leading off with a slow king uh pretty much more as an anti-lead than anything else right i kind of didn't want to let santa conda do, do his thing for free i know he's kind of been wanting to lead off with terrakion once or twice so i thought this would be a solid anti-lead that kind of did, didn't give him many turns in, in the beginning uh and he ends up leading off with a drampa now I didn't really account for many Drampa sets in team prep, but uh, I felt like my team overall just handled it decently well. But one thing that, uh, ironically, it did handle it well was my uh, Cinderace, which didn't do a whole ton with Pyroball, but I was hoping to to kind of uh, manage it with, with the rest of my team, and he dropped a Draco straight up turn one. And I'm fully physically defensive, right? So that does a ton of damage, which re reveals to him, first, first and foremost, that I'm fully physically defensive, and reveals... Uh, to me that this thing is specs right there's no doubt about this this thing is specs uh and i and i always took a specs hit but man did that seem dicey in the moment uh this does allow me to go out into vicable now that this thing is weakened and maybe it would have been worth it to to get up a sub but like i was saying in team preview uh i think it's most worth it to get up webs as soon as possible um however looking back at it now it probably does make sense to, to get up a sub first um but yeah, like I said, I, I didn't want to give any free turns, and I kind of wanted to just kind of take my opportunities where they were, especially since, uh, if I remember correctly, this Vicavolt didn't have any real way of of hitting Sandaconda. So, letting the Sandaconda, uh, being behind a sub against the Sandaconda really didn't do much for me in, in the longer run of this game. So, with that in mind, I just got the heck out of here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my Vic Volt set is Mono Thunderbolt, so I really had no business setting up a sub anyway, which is kind of unfortunate. Maybe I should have accounted for this Anaconda, but it, to be completely truthful, I probably didn't expect this Anaconda to come. I thought there were many other options to come. I, if, if anything, I was more worried about like the Decidueye coming than anything else. But this does allow me to go back into this, and because I'm fully physically defensive, I did run a, a couple of counts, and I think Earthquake maxed out at like 25-ish percent, and I got that back on regen alone, right? So this will allow me to um, to teleport away. I kind of thought that he might want to switch out, knowing how defensive, how physically defensive I, I, I was. You can see that I think about this for, for a while, but I ultimately decide that slacking off now and getting myself set up for kind of the, the longer run of this game would be more beneficial for me. So. He, he does kind of take the bait a little bit. He, he, he does Earthquake. Maybe he saw that some calc against a, a, a regular, like, non-defensive Slow King would have picked up a KO. But, uh, but I, I did end up getting him to take the bait. And this allows me to teleport on the following play. Hopefully he switches out, but either way, I'm, uh, I, I know that I can take a 
an earthquake and regen it back plus more regardless uh but he ends up switching out which is pretty great for me right goes out into the mandibuds and i think about this a lot but um this is going to be the moment where i kind of test out whether or not i can bring in the vicavolt and catch him off guard on a no speed mandibuzz and mandibuzz really doesn't have to run much speed at all to outspeed a, a max speed vicavolt but i max speed just to try to catch him off guard maybe just on the off chance that i can catch him i wanted to see if i if, if i could do it and, and 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 even now i'm thinking about it a lot i'm thinking about it is this even really worth it but i can't really afford to let him defog for free and ultimately um Either way, even if he does stay in a defog, I need to punish it somehow. And he ends up going for a U-turn. He obviously expects it to, to, to be faster than me and clicks U-turn, um, thinking that thinking that uh, he can get away from here without taking a, a big ball hit. But I catch him off guard, and that's going to be huge. I cannot stress how how huge that's going to be for the for the longer kind of look of this match. And he, and he told me after the match that uh, he, he he was a little bit sunken when he saw that I did hit that thing with so much damage but it does allow one to, to ramp up for free which is not great uh because this thing can do so many things but i kind of thought that, that he would want to drop a draco because i had things in in the back I, I set up a sub i expected the draco because i have things in the back like the like the extra drill to, to take his like potentially the, the 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 slow king he goes for the hyper voice it goes through sub i took a risk there it didn't work out obviously um but but as long as we can keep sticky webs up then Vicavolt has kind of done his job, and there's not really much that Vicavolt could do in, in the remaining of this match. Um, there are a couple of shenanigans I could, I could maybe pull off with, with Sub Roost, but at the end of the day, um, I'm ultimately happy with how this kind of went down. I bring in the the extra here, and I think about this a lot because I really want to get a Rocks. I really also want to click Rock Slide, thinking that the Mandibuzz would want to come in. I also really want to click Swords Dance. Like, I really want to click Swords Dance. So you can see I'm, I'm hovering over some moves quite a bit. I think at the end of the day, I go for Stealth Rocks, thinking that he would want to switch out, knowing that I can that, that, I, that I resist the Hyper Voice, I think. Or I could just hit this thing. I guess we'll see in just a second. Or I click Swords Dance, maybe. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, just knowing how big of a pain this thing is going to be for the overall look of this match, because it's not something that I can really easily kind of Oko or anything like that, is going to make it really tough for me. He switches out immediately. As I click Sword Hands here, he goes into this thing. Now, now in all honesty, I, I probably was expecting the Manda Buzz more than anything, but because I don't have rocks up, it means I can't, uh, I, I can't Oko this thing with a plus two with a plus two earthquake which means i have to go come out of here um, immediately which sucks but um this this extra drill was really designed to get up to plus four and start kind of doing what it needs to do right and uh well plus four without rocks and plus two sometimes with rocks anthem chip and all that stuff but i was clearly not in a position to really do anything but here i feel like i am in a position to 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 bring in the slow king and because because um of the way that the first early turns have been going i i feel like i can kind of get some i can sneak in some cheeky damage with scald and kind of see how, where, where that gets me maybe snag a burn on on something that would want to come in maybe this thing stays in expect me to, to want to just click teleport or something to that effect who knows um I'm not the most concerned with this thing getting poisoned if he clicks Octics or, some, or something like that, but in comes the Strampa. Now, now earlier we saw that uh, that the Strampa was faster. Now it's under webs. Now I have a little bit of an advantage here, and I can scold if I want to get some some damage off. I can click Side Shot. Maybe this thing clicks Hyper Voice. Maybe the, if this thing clicks Draco, then obviously I go down right away. There are some there are a lot of risks to, to wait here, but. Um, I believe I expect a hyper voice here and I click Psy Shock potentially is what I do. We'll see. But we do snag a burn, which I don't think it matters a whole heck of a lot, but it is somewhat relevant here. Yeah, I I I, I, I consider him and I really expect this thing to want to go for to want to go for uh, a hyper voice again. And I, I try to get some damage off with Psy Shock, especially knowing that I can move first and 
and that even if I do take a bunch of damage, I can regen it off because, I mean, you, you can see just from how th those early turns went that I was able to to go back down from like 10% HP all, all the way back up to full just, just off of regen and slack off. So I'm pretty confident that I can kind of take whatever this thing wants to do and I can get myself back up to where I need to be for the longer look of this match, right? Uh, it does go for the Hyper Voice, so I do believe I take a hit, just barely, just ever so barely. Um, and I believe I get the heck out of here, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want to mess around with this a ton, but um, but this did give me a chance to kind of run Calx and see if it was worth it to, to either give up the, the Slow King or, or um, go into Exedrill, knowing that this thing is Specs into, into Hyper Voice. If it would be worth it, or if there's any other situation here. Um, I, so I'm running some calcs, and I think ultimately I decide. I guess ultimately I decide that it's worth it to give up my slow king. Um, and I, I suppose what was going through my head was that, but this thing would draw. And I suppose what was going through my head was that um, I needed HP on my extra girl just to be able to take hits and potentially sword dance up like i was saying because that's what this extra draw is designed to do under webs and it can do it really really well as long as i give it the opportunity to get up sword dances and i think that's what was going through my head so i was ready to give up my, my slow king but i didn't have to because he goes into necrozma and because he goes into necrozma i believe i decided to go out into the zarud and i start running some calcs Knowing that, I, knowing that I want to go into Zerud, but I start running a, a, a handful of Calyx. Oh no, I go into this thing. Sorry, I, I, I was hovering over Zerud, but but I, I I did run some Calyx because because I was hovering over Zerud, and I do want to say that I was running some Calyx, and I realized pretty early on that I really cannot um, just Oko this thing from where it's at with Darkest Lair. I kind of need some more chip damage on this, and I kind of thought that me bringing this in would would scare this. Uh, Necrozma away, so I kind of went for Stealth Rocks here, but I believe he responds with Heat Wave on this turn and just kind of um, negates my risk, which ultimately, for the larger look of the game, I mean, it looks bad in the moment, but ultimately, I think it's fine. This team is really designed to win with a combination of, of, of Zerud and, and Cinderace, although I do think that that was a, a misplay and, and um, what's that thing called? And Exodrill ha had a bunch of other chances to kind of tear holes in the team. So, a bit of a misplay, but not the worst thing in the world. I still think that getting rocks up helps me out a ton, right? Like, as I was saying, a bunch of the kind of calcs that I had in my head depended on, on, on rocks. And rocks, ultimately, were really, really going to be huge for me if I was going to uh, end this game w with a win. It doesn't allow me to bring in Zerud, but s same things that, that I mentioned before apply, right? I can't really Oko this thing w with Larry. I definitely need some chip or some kind of, um, I, 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 as far as I knew, right? I, I was working off of incomplete information, and so I just kind of went off of the assumption that this thing would be max HP, or or at the very least that it could be. So knowing, so thinking that in, in, in my head, I kind of wasn't confident going for a, a Darkest Lariat. I U-turn out, which is a nice amount of damage, and... And uh, Pat Mac is actually happy that that, that I went for a U-turn in that moment. But I honestly expected a Heat Wave to come in. I did not expect Meteor Beam at all. I really did not expect Meteor Beam at all. But goes for the, go, goes for the Meteor Beam. That's almost certainly going to KO me here, which uh, is fine because uh, I was I was honestly ready to take up the slow thing a bit ago. And this does allow me to go into something that will ensure a KO. And this will be the first opportunity for my Cinderace to come in, if I am not mistaken. My Cinderace is, 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 is able to come in. He hasn't uh, taken turns to set up rocks on my side of the field. So I'm pretty safe for the remainder of the game, I, I think. At, at least that's what I'm thinking in this moment, right? And I can kind of start to play a little recklessly start to claim ko's right i'm playing this from a from a three to six deficit right and, and i feel like that's important like context for for how this match is, is, is gonna go right because I, I i've been doing all this setup i've been giving up mons just to j just to put all the pieces in place for this scenario but i am down to three to six so i am so i do really have to kind of um be bold and and take some and, and take some maneuvers that really put me in a better position and and kind of e even up the um these scores a little bit because it, it if i just kind of continue to, to play passively 
then his team will will just outlive mine and and it won't be able to do much of anything for the remainder of this game but but like i said i've taken all i've taken all these turns to kind of set everything up that i feel like need to be set up and now is my moment to kind of really be bold with it in my mind and again just being sick down six to three doesn't feel great in general so out comes the pyroball this is always going to ko but uh i feel like i'm in a good position now if cinderace is in cinderace can do what it needs to do right and primarily i i, I wanted the cinderace in because it, it just allows the mandibus to come in because mandibus coming in getting any free turns to to, to collect defog that is worst case scenario that that voids all, every bit of, of, of setup that i've been doing up until now and and then is the one thing that i cannot allow right so this the, the santa Cana comes in i believe i expect that and i go into yeah i i i start to go out on, into the zarud i really wanted to go out in, into the wheezing but again all those things that i was discussing earlier i cannot allow um this this mandibus to come in for free and i believe the um the reason that the mandibus damage was so crucial was because now the mandibus is always in range of uh, of a power whip into a into a rock slide so so because it's weakened so much i can play a little bit recklessly with with my zarud i'm, I'm confident that my zarud would have taken that di that hit fine um but I, I hover over Power Whip for a while. I think ultimately I I also hover over Dark Slayer. I think ultimately I, I'm going to go for the U-turn, thinking that this thing would want to switch out, and and just kind of being able to being able to put me put myself in a position to play off of whatever wants to come in. Even if this thing um clicks something else, I'm uh, I'm, I'm confident that that it wouldn't click Earthquake or Stone Age again, uh, so that my Cinderace would be safe to come in, and I can kind of feel out whatever wants to happen here. But goes into Dream Butt was not what I expected, but it. it, 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 it it makes sense for this to ultimately kind of be a sack here and this uh will uh, allow me to kind of play off of whatever wants to happen here although i, I honestly didn't expect to pick up a ko youtube does pick up the ko which is pretty which is pretty big it does allow me to go back into cinderace which is also huge because it allows my cinderace in again to to, to threaten two hits onto everything it just allows the man to us uh, on, on coming in again and and because I'm, 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 I've reset the band. This will allow me whatever, whatever comes in. It'll allow me to U-turn on it, and um, and just get a a, a banded adamant U-turn hit on it to kind of weaken things down and kind of be able to maneuver myself from there, right? So I'm feeling pretty confident in my Cinderace in at the moment, and this kind of puts me in a really solid position vis-a-vis -vis the rest of his team. Although, again. There's much more of his team than, than there's of mine, and my biggest fear at this point is that he can just out resource me and just kind of out out uh, out uh, and just kind of outlast me and take this win, right? Monty comes in. Obviously, the the, the play here is to click U turn, and I can get a, a strong hit off go, going to the root, and I feel pretty confident about what this kind of means for for the rest of the match. However, it's it does still kind of put me in an awkward position uh i really don't want to give up too much damage onto the zarud and and zarud can definitely be be worn down especially oh no i go out into in, in, into wheezing uh I, I believe just to take an earthquake i guess but even then maybe i expect the toxic i'm not too too sure what i expected in this moment but i thought wheezing could have been a, a, a soft play however this is a very obvious bad situation because this allows in the mana buzz in a way that i do not want right um and i believe there was something that i do here um to not invite in the mana buzz or something that i try to do at least we'll see um oh yeah no i i try to pull a double immediately to not allow the, the mana buzz in but i believe if i'm not mistaken that i decide against it We'll see. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hovering over the, the Zerud quite a bit. Obviously, the Zerud makes a ton of sense. And it begs the question. Well, well, it doesn't beg the question. Forgive me. That's a philosophy mistake. Um, it raises the question. Why would I not go straight into, into Zerud? And now that I'm watching this back, I probably should have gone straight into Zerud. Um, and, and it would have probably put me in a much, much better, better, better position 
as he withdraws and goes out, I believe, into the Magna Zone. Yeah, does go into the Magna Zone, which again raises the question, why did I not go into Zerud earlier? It was a big misplay on, on, on my part, and I recognized it immediately, but in the moment, I was panicking. Um, but I'm, I'm not I'm not in a great position here either because my, obviously my, my, my biggest fear is that this is a really defensive set and it has body press on it, right? Body press would hard stop my my Zerud and hard stop a lot of kind of what I'm trying to do in the remaining of this match, in the remainder of this match. So I, I U-turn out and, and it allows me to go out into my Weezing to take a, a potential body press. If it doesn't go for, 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 for body press now, then I'm reasonably confident that that I can kind of um, manage whatever I want to do. What do you feel like to teleport? And teleport was such a fantastic play. Teleport was such a fantastic play. I cannot I cannot accentuate enough how fantastic of a play that is because it allows him to get in the thing. And this is everything that I've been fearing this entire game. And it, and it all stems from that one misplay by, by me going out in, in, into Weezing, except the, the, these are rude. But it also... Again, it just teleporting is a fan, a phenomenal play, right? And it really just kind of, and it really kind of puts me in a bad position vis with the rest of the team. However, 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 um, he does click roost, and I do get the paralysis, right? This means a lot, right? It, it means that I'm gonna outspeed. It means that some full pairs can happen. It means that we could potentially d uh, prevent the default, which is huge, right? It's huge if that happens. I, cl I click Thunderbolt. This thing uh, gets the defog off, right? Unfortunately, it sucks, but that's kind of wh wh what I expected to happen, right? And at this moment, I'm just I'm just thinking to myself, let Weezing get up healthier. I need the Weezing to, to kind of take take on the, the Tracheon because my thinking for for the overall look of this game here is that his last remaining source of big big offense is going to be the Terrakion and as long as this Weezing is still healthy and can take on the Terrakion directly then then nothing changes with my with my strategy of, of Cinderace and, and Zuri together they can still manage the rest of the team and and it still puts me in a fantastic position it still puts me in a fantastic position to, to be able to to, to win this game so I'm de I definitely haven't given up yet even though that was kind of a worst case scenario for what I needed to happen I clicked Sluzbomb just in case this thing expects me to go for another uh, Thunderbolt and and uh, decides to go out into into the into the Santa Conda and I believe I go for flamethrower this turn um, in case he wants to go out into the into the other thing the uh, the, 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 the Cyclops the Magna Zone and he told me after the match that he definitely considered it right but I, I get the flamethrower off I'm able to I'm able to deal with this thing and notably it is now th three to three again right so so we have managed to to, to to tie things up things are looking a lot stronger for me especially because again the the the, the terrakion is going to be his biggest source of offense yet um everything else gets kind of handled right right the cinderace just gets handled by in theory right I still have have the resources necessary right because my cinderace deals with the the the, the magna zone these these are deals with the the santa conda and the and the other thing and and, and the wheezing deals with the tracheon to some extent right so wheezing goes out i i i got into this thing because i kind of expect a thunderbolt to come out here and i kind of really just need to do damage to this thing or at the very least i, I need to u-turn out in in order to get in my my my, my cinderace however i did kind of think that i don't know what i thought here i probably should have just clicked u-turn here to, to try to break in the cinderace and start trying to do things oh no if the cinderace comes in it it, it invites in the track down in a way that probably doesn't worry out well for me i don't know now that i'm thinking about it th that, that probably might have been a, a better way to kind of branch out here but uh a big deal here i i, I feel like darkest area i kind of yeah i don't know what i thought i guess i thought that i needed to deal with it i don't know you should sure? This is a better play, right? Either way, oh, I, I guess what I was thinking was that, um, was that my Cinderace needed to be able to take other hits, to take, so taking a, 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 oh no, I, I don't know. 
I don't know. I I mean, honestly, you should probably would have been able to play. But yeah, I guess maybe if this thing was was analytic, then 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 having my Cinderace take a Thunderbolt was kind of a big ask, and and that was something that I couldn't risk. Yeah, yeah that's probably where, where my head was at. I'm I'm not gonna make myself up too badly about it because of that. I I, I think that checks out in my head, right? So I I I get paralyzed, right? And you can see if you're if you're paying attention that I clicked power whip because I thought that that I could bait him into going out into Tracheon. He goes into Tracheon, and this is the, the this is the final kind of frontier here, right? If I can take out the Tracheon, then I can potentially win the game because I have all the resources that I need. Otherwise, and I got fully paralyzed, right? He he took a big big risk by going directly out in, in, into the Tracheon, trying trying to get the attack boost off of my Dark Lariat. But I but I, I I called him out on that play. I click Power Whip and I get fully paralyzed. That was a game losing paralysis, obviously. And 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 there's a lot that that we can talk about here in this end game here. Because obviously he, he brought up that I that I was able to KO the Mandibuzz because it got paralyzed. But my argument to him was that I think that the, that the paralysis on the on the Zerud mattered a ton more because the the Mandibuzz whether it got paralyzed or not it already did what it needed to do right. It got off the defog and it was able to to kind of uh set up the rest of that end game right and if i if i never if, if i never paralyzed it i probably would have clicked clicked will o wisp with my wheezing onto that mana buzz just to weaken foul play which would have set up the entire rest of the game in, in a different way but but my main argument was that um whether or not i i, I, I paralyzed it, the mana buzz is is irrelevant because the mana buzz got to do what it would need to do anyway it got to set up a, a a defog there and and that never really mattered as much but pat mac handed me tragion on a silver heckin platter right and and i wasn't allowed to take it because because of that of that paralysis i believe in my heart of hearts that 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 that, that Paralysis decided the game so much more than that paralysis on that mana buzz. I don't know. You guys can disagree. Who knows? Um, but 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 the game is pretty much over once that once that Tracheon is in and I and that power up doesn't hit. I get crit on on my on my thing on my Cinderace, which now 100% seals it. Right in my head, I was thinking right that maybe if if Cinderace could have come in cleanly. And not gotten crit KO'd. That, that that maybe I can't. I, I I could put some pressure on on on. He probably g gives this thing up. Is, is is what I'm saying, right? Which would then allow me to to bring in the wheezing. And and uh. And kind of manage the the other two members of the team, right? Because if I can get Will Wisps off on the. On the Santa Conda, as well as the, as the Tracheon, then he kind of runs out of out of, out of firepower, and maybe this Weezing could could outlast the rest of the team. But as it is, I, n I never get that opportunity. I, I I do actually get the Weezing to, to take out the, the 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 Cyclops, the I keep forgetting this the Magnezone, and and I do get a point of diff back. But man, did it not feel great to 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 get crit right after I get paired on the turn where I can take out this dang Terrakion when it where it really really felt right like like this Terrakion was the last thing standing between was the last bit of offense standing between um, me being able to to, to 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 outlast his team and and him kind of not being able to to to. And and, and and this track on just being able to, to steamroll the rest of my team, right? It really, really felt like I had what I needed on, on a couple of occasions, and I just kind of squandered it here. Obviously, there were some plays that I could have been better. I think that that overall, the end of the game didn't feel great for for either of us because there, because there were attacks on, on both sides. Obviously, he was pretty upset about the Amanda Buzz paralysis in the moment, and no doubt that I would have been too, right? Like, I 100% would have been too. But I think with some time away from the match, 
I still believe that the Mandibuzz did what it needed to do for the moment, and I didn't get that opportunity with with, with my on that paralysis. But with that, that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UBL as well as, as well as other things to come in the very, very near future. But once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll be once again out.